start with the eighth chapter, a short monsoon diary. Now, before you read, do you know what a diary is? Now, what a diary is? It is a record of personal experiences written day after day over a long period of time. You can also use the diary to note down things you plan to do immediately or in the future. Now, one of the most famous diaries published as a book is the Diary of Anne Frank. Now, who is Anne Frank? Anne Frank was a 13-year-old girl who used to keep her records in a diary. And during the World War II, she and her family was hiding from the war. And she had the records of the day-to-day -day basis, how they had escaped from war and how long they, what do they face during the World War II. Now, in this chapter, we have few extracts from Ruskin Bond's diary. Now, who is Ruskin Bond? He is a poet all, as well as an author. He is a British descent, but he was adopted by an Indian family. He stays in Masuri, Uttarakhand, India. He is known for novels and writings for children literature. He has awarded many awards like Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan. Now, in his diary, he portrays the silent miracles of nature and life's little joys and regrets. Now, let us start with the dated on June 24th. In June 24th, he is talking about the monsoon mist, the first day of the monsoon mist. And he's telling that the birds are silent and the mist comes like uh, climbing the hill. He says that the mist turns to be very sad. He's also saying that it is like a blanket which covers the, which covers the whole entire hill. And his trees were ringing with bird song. And suddenly when the mist arrived, it was deathly still. Like as if it was a midnight. And he's also saying that during the mist, he could hear a person called Biju calling out to his sister. But it was his assumption that he was running about on the hillside. On the date, June 25th, he's talking about the monsoon rains. How it is warm as well as humid. It is not though cold in high altitude, but the plants seems to know it too. The first cobra really is rearing its head from the ferns. And is also saying that when he was walking to bank and post office, he could see the miracle of nature. And is also saying that as he was walking through the valley, he saw a schoolboy. And this boy asked him, to describe the hill station in one sentence and he replied that it would be a paradise that might have been. Now he's saying that the hill station would be paradise means it would be looking like a heaven. June 27th dated. He's talking about the rains that have been come and it's like the seasonal visitors like leopard and other thousand leashes have also arrived due to the rains. He's telling that a leopard had lifted a dog from the nearby servant's quarter and in the evening it attacked one of Biju's cows but fled approach of Biju's mother who came screaming imprecations. Imprecations means with the curses. Now, the author is also saying that he didn't, he's getting used to little bloodletting every day by the leeches. Now, another arrival were the scarlet minivets, which is a bird who is bright red in color like a cuckoo, but its females are in yellow. Ruskin Bond says that the scarlet minivets are very vibrant in color, that they cannot conceal or hide themselves in the trees, and they cannot remain absolutely silent. They cannot go unnoticed. He also says that there comes another bird, song bird called Drongo, which is unnecessarily aggressive and they are always chasing this minivets away. He says that during this time, a tree creeper moves rapidly up the trunk of the oak tree and it also snaps the insects all the way. 
and later on there is rain there and there is no dearth of food for the insectivorous birds. Another dated on August 2 says that all the night it was raining and on top of the roof it was noisily drumming on the roof. Now there was no storm or no, or no thunder. But the tropical downpour was steady swish. He's saying that you feel like going to sleep but also you feel like lying awake. Now it is a good sound to read by the rains outside. He's saying that it, the sound outside and the quietness within is the most amazing thing. It feels like there is a feeling of being untouched by and yet in touch with the rain. Now on August 3rd, he says that the rain stops and now the cl clouds begin to break up. The sun strikes the hill on my left. He says that there is women chopping up sticks. He can hear the tingle of the cow bells. On the oak tree, the crow shakes the raindrops from the feathers and cause disconsolately, means unhappily, and the water drips from a leaking drain pipe. Then suddenly there is a clean and pure, the song of the whistling thrush emerges like a dark sweet, dark sweet secret from the depth of the ravine, from the valley. Now, dated on August 12th, here the poet writes about the endless rain and the permanent mist. He also says that they didn't see the sun for 8 or 9 days continuously. Everything was damp and soggy, means it was wetty outside. They couldn't go outside and look out of the window and they could see the bobbing umbrellas. And the hillsides are lush as late monsoon flowers begin to appear. Uh, plants like white balsam, dahlias, begonias and ground orchards. Now August 31st, it was the last day of the August. And the lush monsoon growth has reached its peak. The seeds of the crobra lily was turning red which signifies the rain are coming to an end. So in a few days the ferns will start turning yellow. But right now they are still firm, green and upright. He also reminds of the ground orchards, mauve lady slippers and the white butterfly orchards put on a fashion display on the grassy slopes of Landor, Landor in Masure, Uttarkhand. He's talking about the white dahlias which is red, yellow and magenta, rear their heads from the rocky cervix where they have taken hold. Also now snakes and broadens flooded out of their holes and burrows take shelter in roofs, attic and go down. He's telling that small burrows means it's a small hole where the animals take their hiding. But he's telling you now they have shifted to their roofs, attics and go downs. A shrew week of eyesight blunders about the room much to the amusement of the children. And when there is shrew, shrew means it is similar to a mouse. And when someone tries to kill it, the grandparent says that they shouldn't kill. It brings lucky and they bring money. And Ruskin says that he was sure enough that he received a check in the mail. Not a very large amount, but welcome all the same. Next he talks about October 3rd. Now, they have moved straight from monsoon to winter rains. Snow at higher altitudes and after an evening hailstorm, the sky and hills are surfaced with a beautiful golden light. Now, on January 26th, winter rains in the hills. In the harsh silence of the house, there was quiet alone and his friend who was with him had left and it was lonely and quiet. He was sitting in a liquid silence and a silence within surrounded by the rhythm of the rain. 
the steady drift of water on leaves, on lemons, on roof, brumping on drenched dahlias and window panes, while the mists hold the house in a dark caress. He paused near a window and the rain stops and starts again, and the trees no longer green but grey menace me with their loneliness, means it threatens or he is completely lonely there. So during the season, he feels that he is lonely as there is no one around him. And on March 23rd, which was the end of winter, he is saying that the blackest cloud that he has ever seen squatted means came down over Missouri and then it hailed marbles for half an hour means the hail storms were raining for half an hour. Nothing like a hail storm to clear the sky. And he's also reminding that even when he's writing, he could see a rainbow forming. So this was the extracts taken from the diary of Ruskin Bond. How he talks about the changes in nature, how it shows the happiness and sadness as well as the truth of life. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.